Welcome back to Next Level Rides. In today's episode, the 540 is going to be getting some fueling upgrades so we can end up running spicier fuel with higher ethanol content. So stay tuned and we're gonna get to it. All right, so this is what we're working with. We've got a TU pump out of a newer Supra and we have a new gasket. My understanding is that the bolts themselves are gonna be reusable, so they're not one-time use. However, if they are aluminum, I may consider putting some Allen head style bolts in them just to make sure that they don't uh, snap in the valve cover. That's the last thing I need. So for this one here, first thing we need to do is actually rotate this connection. So I was provided the extension harness to be able to swap it over, but I don't want to cut into the factory sound deadening right up top. So I'm gonna take a peek to see if I could end up popping it up, but worst comes worse, what you can end up doing with a flathead or a pry bar, something similar to this, is that you can put it right underneath this little ridge here and give it a little pry up. So let's see if this will end up working. For me, I'm gonna put a Sharpie line right where this side connector sits. I'm gonna try very, very lightly to pry this thing up. This one doesn't want to go. Okay, so I'm going to leave it for now. I'm not going to start digging away at it. But my understanding is this is a big magnet. So we will see if there's a way to move it with a little bit more force. Otherwise, I'm going to see if I can end up using just this adapter connector. The engine bay is a little more forgiving on the 540, so hopefully it doesn't run into the actual engine cover itself, but we'll take a peek. All right, so first things first, I did end up unlocking the vehicle and the fuel pump kicked in. So we need to try and avoid that. So make sure the car is unlocked and you come in here and you disconnect the negative off the battery. Now, if you don't know how to disconnect the negative off the battery, most BMWs just uses a 10 mil and then you'll wanna put some sort of a towel in between the connector. If you're not comfortable disconnecting the negative off the battery or playing with the battery, I don't think you should be doing this to begin with. All right, so you get to the front. You're gonna reach inside, pop the hood. Confirm that your power is out. Yep. Now, what we're gonna do on the 540 to play it safe is you have a secondary auxiliary battery right here. My understanding, this one's a lithium battery. So just to play it safe, we're gonna take the cover off this one, put it to the side, and we're gonna, again, disconnect the negative, which would be this one farther over there. So again, 10 mil wrench and we're gonna put a little towel up and over top the connector. Could have probably found a cleaner rag, but that's okay. Something like that. And then we'll put this to the side. First thing I'm gonna do is admire how clean the engine bay is or relatively clean the engine bay is. There's some little dirt and scuffs and whatever, but I ended up washing the engine bay and surprisingly it actually turned out pretty good. Another thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change this back to the aftermarket cone filter. I was trying to diagnose an issue between the JB4 and the MHD. Terry from BMS ended up saying that I should put this back on to rule out any issue with the MAF sensor. Now, MAF sensor we attempted, connected, disconnected. He figured I should try the factory intake, but at that point I realized, nope, it's time to ditch the JB4 and move on to the MHD. So MHD doesn't have the issue that I had, the other issue I was attempting to confirm is higher intake temps, but there was no significant difference between the factory air box and the cone filter itself. So we're gonna put the cone filter back in since there's really no big difference or no appreciable difference and uh, make some more turbo noises. All right, this one up here, E14, this one down here, 16. Probably getting a little bit nasty. We drove through some crappy construction, let's see. Yeah, not that bad. All right, so we're gonna put the MAF sensor from here into here. I'm gonna do that off screen because this isn't an intake install video. Mm -hmm. 
All right, and take his back on. Next up, fuel pump. All right, so BMW is kind of funny. They give you this little flap thing here. How do I get these off? Hmm. It just pops. Man, I hate these connectors. All right. Tuck that one away. So I see two T3035s here and two big boy lines. My understanding is that you'll want to loosen up all of these lines so you have a little bit of flexibility when you go to take this in and out. So where is it connected over there? Okay, so this hard line actually goes to a soft line. So that one's okay. All right, so learn from my experience. I've left this for about an hour and a half for the pressure to bleed down. So I'm hoping that this isn't gonna spray fuel. It's good to note that the residual pressure in these lines can be upwards of 2000 PSI. So 2000 PSI will cut you real good. So be very careful. So I'm gonna use safety glove and safety squints. This one just needs to be a little bit loose. Okay, loose. This one will be the same thing. Loose. So we'll slowly take this off. Yeah, I don't see any pressure in that one. Spin that one off. Spin this one off. Might need to take the whole thing off. So I can smell a bit of fuel. Now if there was any pressure, it would definitely have leaked out or bled out by now. So I'm gonna loosen this one connector that's just above, tuck it underneath. Same thing. So this one is tucked under here. That's a lot of fuel. Okay, so when you go to take this one off, just be fully expecting that there's gonna be fuel that drips out. So be better prepared than I was. So we're gonna clean the ends. Now it's very important not to get these damaged here because if you end up damaging these, then you're gonna have a leak. T30. Okay, so for these ones, be a little bit careful. Last thing you wanna do is break one of these. They're not torqued too much, lighter than a spark plug. So because this is sitting on the cam lobe, you're gonna to wanna to loosen or take the tension off slowly. So there's three ratchets, three more. And then we're gonna to go to the back again. Three more. Let's do three extra there. And alternate until the tension is taken off. Okay, so that's finger tight there. This one should be pretty close to finger tight. So as you saw the one on the bench, there's a big spring in the middle of it. So that spring, that spring ends up riding on the cam lobe. So you need to be a bit cautious. You want to take the tension off evenly and equally to not have it spring off or get bound up or who knows what. So this, it's pretty loose now. So now it's just a matter of taking the screws out. Mm, that's some fuel. Okay, there's one. Now it's feeling pretty light. Yeah, it is a steel bolt, so just be a little bit careful when you go to put it back in. But you can definitely reuse that. And this one here. There's another one. I have my clean paper towel here. The hard line comes out. And this will just come straight out. There we go. With the old gasket. You can see the gasket and then the lobe that the spring, the spring and the lobe that rides on the cam. So let's just make sure everything looks good. We're gonna give it a quick wipe with the clean rag. At this point, you can do a little bit of an inspection and make sure that everything's good. Cleanliness will be key because you want it to seal up and not drip oil. So for anyone curious, let's see if I can get aim the camera there. Go, go, gadget, zoom. Yep. So this is what the inside of the little orifice looks like. So clean it up all nice. The plunger sits right on the end of that. That little pinhole there, 
that's going to supply oil to the bottom of the plunger so that it doesn't run dry and it doesn't score anything. So we're going to double check that this is all nice, clean, and we're going to start by putting the new one on. All right, so new gasket. I'm going to poke in there nicely. So the little tab goes towards the front of the engine. Poke, poke, poke. And it's going to sit just inside the valve cover there. Now, I did try and spray off the engine so I wouldn't have a bunch of dust and stuff lingering as I was doing this. So just be very careful if your engine bay is a wee bit dusty because you don't want to get any of that in there. So just off camera, I took my little syringe of oil. I put some oil on the, the little flapper dealy here. And just so when I install it, it's not going to have any portion of it being dry. There we go. Okay, so let's see if I can get the one started by finger. So if you can get a couple of threads on these, that should help you quite a bit. So I'm going to get the two of these in and then I'm going to find out what the torque sequence is. Well, I know what the sequence is. I'm just going to find the torque spec. All right, so the two of these, what I'm going to do is use a little bit of common sense. I'm going to put them and bottom them out by finger just so I know that they're started and have equal thread engagement. And then I will start with the torquing. All right, let's take a look, make sure it's even around. Yep, yeah, looks good. Okay, so from here, let me give it some five ratchets each. Starting to get snug. Okay, so it's a little bit loose. Snug it down on here. All right, so torque for these is 12 Newton meters. This goes to 14.1, and so we are doing 14.1 Newton meters. That was close. All right, now that that's torqued, we're gonna start by snugging up these fuel lines. Actually, you're probably not gonna be able to see shit until I get my big head out of the way. So what I like to do when I'm dealing with fuel stuff is just make sure there's no abnormal tension on these where you'd be able to spin them all the way back out. This one's a little bit suspect only because it's sliding on nice, but I believe it's when you tighten it, it's gonna have to pull the line up and over. This one's good. This one's good. This one's good. And then grab your trusty 17 mil, millimeter. Don't reef on them, but make sure they're tight. Let's start with this one. And we're gonna know pretty quick when we go to prime it if it's leaking or having issues. Now you don't need to flash or do any special settings for the TU pump. It's going to automatically regulate it to the factory rail pressure. It's just that if you're running more ethanol, it'll allow a higher amount of pressure. So it'll maintain the fuel pressure. Plug in coil one, plug in coil four. Okay, so before I put this one back on the little lump there, we're gonna use the connection. And by connection, I mean the extension harness. Okay, so this one plugs here. And the opposite way. So click, and then make sure the little red tab is down. And for this one, it's gonna mate up to the factory one here. So with this one, you just wanna make sure that it's not gonna bind or be in the way of anything. So I think what I might do is try to run it underneath here around this post so it's relatively slim and out of the way. So this one again should click. Yep. And that's it. So this one I'll tuck in behind the coils and just like that. So it's going to go around the fuel pump. It's going to go just underneath. There's not going to be any crazy tension pulled on it, but you're not going to have any issue. So now I'm hoping, if I move this back into place, that it'll all sort of fit-ish, maybe. 
I guess we're gonna see when we go to put the cover back on. Well, it looks like it's sticking out just that extra little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave these a little bit loose and we're gonna reconnect the battery and we're gonna test the fuel pressure. Make sure it's not leaking. All right, so now I'm gonna grab the key and the light. If you lock it, you'll hear everything going. But if you unlock it, it should prime the fuel pump. Don't see anything. So let's give it a wipe down. Now, if you have MHD, a good idea or a good tip would be log into your MHD and check to see if it's actually showing rail pressure. So even with the vehicle off, it should show rail pressure. And if it does, that's a pretty good indicator that you're not gonna have a leak. Okay, so we've just connected to the Wi-Fi for the MHD dongle. Connected, so let's change the coolant one to rail pressure. So rail pressure looks good, so we shouldn't have a leak. So we'll do a final check, sniff test, we're good. Visual test, we're good. Okay, so we're gonna give it a quick start. As always, spritz for good luck. I already started it, but whatever. All right, so there you have it. It really wasn't all that bad. Just do yourself a favor, take your time, look over your work and double and triple check. Pretty self-explanatory. So a couple of reasons why you'd want to run the TU pump is if you want to run more than an E30, if you want to run say E40, E50. Some people have run full E85 with just the TU pump. Now, it kind of comes into its stride when you upgrade the turbo. It's capable of 550, 600 wheel horsepower. So it'll be more than adequate for what I'm looking to do. Now with MHD, you have your stage one and stage two maps, but there's a stage two high pressure fuel pump map. So that utilizes the TU pump or an upgraded pump. You get a nice bump in mid range and it ends up being quite good on the 95 octane or the E30 map. So as always, that's all for today. Feel free to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Oh, Welcome back to Next Level Rides. In today's episode, the 540 is getting a few fuel. Welcome back to Next Level Rides. In today's episode, the 540 is getting a few fueling upgrades so that it could be. Whoa, hey. That's not how you tighten a battery. It's snug. Check the positive that's snug. Nice. I'm gonna jump to the back. If you hear an explosion and you hear me screaming, I had a problem. <laughs>